So, hello, my dear doctor. I'd like to come, I have come forward with a very important case. This elderly lady presented with the shortness of breath on exhaustion, palpitations, and the leg swelling, bilateral leg swelling. So, she presented with all these symptoms altogether. But beforehand, I'd like to talk, my dear, listen very carefully. The patients with the cardiovascular system, if it is involved, the symptoms are, I'd like to tell here, the ASD. Just remember this one, what I said, the ASD. ASD means the A for angina, S for syncope, and D for dyspnea. And all happen, the all exertion, means exertional symptoms. So, ASD means the bundle pack, the box, my dear, angina, syncope, dyspnea, on exertion. And next to these three, the most important cardiovascular system, the palpitations and the leg swelling. What I'm saying, the most important information, my dear, the peoples will have the angina, then the syncope is a loss of consciousness and dyspnea for breathlessness and palpitations and the leg swelling. Among these five important symptoms of the cardiovascular system, if anyone presented two, three, four, five altogether, we must think about the heart is really damaged to that extent that leads to these symptoms. So it's a very simple information so that we can make our diagnosis. Think about the diagnosis. So the lady present with the palpitation, shortness of breath and exhaustion, and the legs were in. So definitely the cardiovascular system is involved. So now what you need to do? You need to start the cardiovascular system examination. And cardiovascular system examination starts with the pulse. And I have examined her and I found that she has got the 120 base per minute means rate with the irregular rhythm. So she has got the fast atrial fibrillation. What I said, my dear, listen very carefully. For the cardiovascular system examination, you need to know the first examination that you need to look for atrial fibrillation means the irregular rhythm. If you found the irregular rhythm, so the diagnosis of atrial fibrillation, and that means the heart will have the mitral stenosis with or without mitral regurgitation. Means you found the irregular rhythm of atrial fibrillation, the peripheral part of the cardiovascular systems, and you should think about definitely the heart will have the mitral stenosis, the valvular heart disease. Means we can feel the pulse and we can feel the what's happening in the heart. And definitely the heart that I'm expecting, the lady will have the mitral stenosis. I'll discuss another things in other video clips, but here that I'm just focusing here, did you found the irregular pulse with the atrial diagnosis done, then you are focusing the mitral stenosis, the diagnosis. What I found, my dear, immediately after the pulse, that I found that the JBP is raised. She has got the raised JBP. So you see the JBP is raised. The pulsation is look here, you see. You see the pulsation? Now I'd like to give a pressure onto the right upper quadrant and we'll see that will be raised and more visible. You see the JVP is more visible here. You see the JVP is more visible, more visible here. So there is more visible. So yes, yes, my dear doctor. And immediately after that, that I examine her, the precordial. So this is the visible apex bead, you see? This is visible. So I need to feel it here. So here I can feel the tapping apex bead. And I found the faster sound, loud faster sound. And also you need to know my that is very much important. Along with the loud faster sound, I found the loud P2, I found the palpable P2, I found the left personal heave, and also I found the Low piece localized rough rumbling, mid dance to like murmur all together in the left 15 hours of space with the bell of the stethoscope, left lateral position with the breath holding after expiration. And also, she has she has she has already got the right heart failure, evidenced by the raised JVP and also the hepatomegaly 
and the foot edema. So you see the pitting, so pitting edema. And you see the pitting. So I would like to talk my dear before I am going for the what I found there. I would like to talk what findings that I found. So I don't listen very carefully because of the mitral stenosis is complicated by the pulmonary hypertension. So we need to know what are the features of PHT. So it is an important bundle pack for the PHT. So I say the PHT, the P for P2, H for he, and T for tricuspid regurgitation. What I say, the PST for the P2, heave and dry cuspid regurgitation. So P2, you can palpable P2 or you can loud P2. And heave is the lip personal heave and dry cuspid regurgitation that you are expecting the pan-systolic murmur at the lip lower sternal zone, means the lip fourth there's a space. So the PST findings. And these mitostenosis is also complicated by PST is complicated with the right heart failure. So the right heart failure with the RHF, my dear. R for raised to JBP. And H for hepatomegaly. And once again, the foot, F for foot edema. So raised JBP, hepatomegaly, or tender hepatomegaly, pulsatile hepatomegaly, and F for foot edema. My dear, listen very carefully. This PSD and RHF is not only the mnemonics to remember all them together, but also it's a clinical evidences or clinical findings, clinically at the bedside, you can say it's a mild, moderate or severe. It does mean the P2 is a mild findings, mild pulmonary hypertension, or H for heave. If you found the lip person heave with the right medical hypertrophy, this is nothing but the findings for the moderate pulmonary hypertension. And T for tricuspid regurgitation, if you found this is severe pulmonary hypertension. And next to the right heart failure is R for rate JB similarly, the rate JV, only you found the rate JV. So these are mild to moderate right heart failure. H for hepatomegaly, tender pulsatory hepatomegaly. So it's a moderate to severe. And if you found the foot edema, so you can say the severe to very severe right heart failure. Means what I'm saying is a clinically grading that you can. The mild moderate severe PSD means the pulmonary hypertension and mild moderate severe the right heart failure. Yes, my dear doctor, the, what is the message that I'd like to give you? So the message is, this lady has got the severe mitostenosis. And severity means the pulmonary hypertension right at failure, is the features of severity. Yes, my dear. And also features of severity, the short gap that we call the source, source gap, means the S to an opening snap, the gap is the shorter, the murmur with the lengthening of the murmur. So this is, this is another theoretical part, but very, very similar, very, easily that we should think about if the if the patient having the pulmonary hypertension features and the right heart failure features that you can say it's a severe mitostenosis. So what I said, this lady the severe mitostenosis. Severe means why? Because the features evidenced by the pulmonary hypertension and the right heart failure. And the PST is evidenced by the P4P2, H4 heave and T4 tricuspid regurgitation. And the right heart failure, the R4 raised JBP, H4 hepatomegaly and F4 foot edema. So this is the severe mitosteroid. Mitosteroid evidence by, once again, the loud, faster sound with the mid-diastolic murmur. It's enough to, the, to make the diagnosis of severe mitosteroid, which is complicated by PST, pulmonary hypertension, and the right heart failure, and also the atrial fibrillation. So this lady is a candidate for intervention for the mitosteroid. Yes, my dear, this is the message that I'd like to yes, discuss with you, and already I have shared and I think you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear. Thank you very much.